As Governor Greg Gianforte seeks re-election, he does so amid a seismic economic shift. In addition to the years of high inflation felt everywhere, Montanans face increasingly unaffordable housing. The National Association of Realtors currently ranks Montana as the least affordable state to buy a home. Montana PBS's Stan Parker sat down with the governor and his challenger, Democrat Ryan Bussey, to see what should be done about it. The west end of Billings is like a lot of places in Montana right now. New neighborhoods with freshly poured concrete popping up like dandelions. But despite all this new construction, Montana still endures a painful shortage of affordable housing. It's a concern the candidates for governor say they hear. I would agree the cost of housing is probably the number one issue facing working families in Montana. We don't really have a functioning state of the people who make it go can't afford to live in it. As Governor Greg Gianforte seeks re-election to a second term, he's trying to walk the line between defending his record on housing. This is why I constituted the, uh, my housing task force. And letting Montanans know he sees their struggle. But there's more we need to do. All while his challenger, Democrat Ryan Bussey, is on the attack. I want to be a governor who, help, who helps make it easier on working folks, who rolls back property taxes, not one like Gianforte who makes it harder on them. Property taxes and housing affordability are two issues tied at the hip. For as the rising cost of housing makes it harder on renters and home buyers, it also puts the squeeze on current homeowners in the form of higher property tax bills. In Gianforte's first term, he sought to solve these issues using a tool that's become a signature of his administration, the task force. He put together bipartisan teams to pitch policies on both housing affordability and property taxes. His prescription for the housing issue? There's two levers to help expand access to affordable housing. One is you have to increase the supply. This is why we made the apprenticeship ratio changes, because if you want more houses, you need more carpenters, plumbers, and electricians. It used to be that uh, you had to have two journeymen for every apprentice in the state of Montana. We flipped that. So now in Montana, one journeyman can supervise two apprentices. That move alone quadrupled the number of apprenticeship slots. Now, the second lever we have in affordable housing is regulations. Uh, this is why we've, we changed the law in Montana. It used to take over a year to get a well permit. Uh, we changed the law, added some resources. Now you can get a well permit uh, in, in just about four months as opposed to over a year. There also seems to be a, a theme of limiting the kind of say that localities can have over what kind of developments come in. And I'm curious if you think there might be a risk of the pendulum swinging too far the other direction. Well, again, government regulations are 40% of the cost of a new home. Take Missoula as an example. When I came into office, there was a lot of exclusionary zoning where uh, you had to have so many acres, you had to have so many square foot. We outlawed that in Montana. So we have, take, we have leaned in a little bit here with some common sense solutions. Perspective on local government control is one contrast between Gianforte and Bussey. I want more building to happen. I want our communities to be better thought out. And I want, we, we had bills that were fought for and passed by Gianforte and the legislator, legislative uh, folks in this last session that limited communities' ability to control or to influence what their communities look like. I don't think that's the answer. I think local communities ought to have more say than the state government does. I don't think the state should be coming in and telling Bozeman or Missoula or Great Falls or Kalispell or anywhere else really what you have to, what you have to do. I think communities can figure that out. And he thinks the state could give home seekers a hand up. We can push low income tax credits that make it easier for folks to be able to uh, afford to purchase, to rent, um, to places in the communities that they service. This is Bussey's first time running for office and still making a first impression. As recently as August, nearly a third of Montanans told pollsters they hadn't yet heard of him. With all that in mind, what do you want people to know about you? I'm a former firearms executive. I, I grew up on a farm and ranch. <clears throat> I tell people I spent the first formative 20 years of my life in a John Deere tractor and on the back of a horse. I'm proud of that. And um, I got what I thought was a dream job in the firearms industry. I sold lots of guns. I helped build up a gun company. And I'm proud of that too. And I'm proud of this state where we live. I believe in public education. I believe in the freedoms of Montanans. I don't think it's the governor's right to be in the doctor's office with women telling them what they can or can't do with their bodies. And I sure don't believe 
in this taxation scheme of Gianforte's where we raise property taxes on everybody. The fact that residential property taxes went up under Gianforte's watch has become a centerpiece of Bussey's campaign. Governor Gianforte was presented, just like the previous four governors have been presented with a budget note at the beginning of the session that says, hey, look, if you don't roll back property tax rates, every single homeowner and small business in this state is going to get hit with a property tax increase. The previous four governors took that advice and rolled back the property tax rate. This governor did the opposite. He allowed property taxes to be jacked up on everybody. We had a $2.5 billion surplus. Billion. We didn't have to raise people's property taxes, and yet we did it anyway. Property taxes are complex, but knowing just a thing or two can go a long way towards cutting through the campaign rhetoric. The first thing is that property taxes fund local services and education, including the university system, but not state government. The next is that property tax rates, unlike income tax rates, are not a simple measure of how much a taxpayer owes. Property tax rates instead dictate how the tax burden is divided among different types of property. So if property taxes on homes were rolled back, as Bussey suggests, the tax burden on homeowners would have indeed gone down by $112 million, according to the Montana Taxpayers Association, but it would have increased the burden on all other types of property by $103 million. And due to the differences in each county's economy, would have had wildly different impacts in different parts of the state. The governor and legislature last session opted instead for other forms of relief for homeowners, at the time facing criticism from Democrats for not including renters in their plan. In the last session, uh, we sent every Montana homeowner a check for over $1,300 to partially offset the increases they've seen. We sent another $1,250 back to every Montana wage earner up to their maximum tax obligation. So between the income tax rebates and the property tax rebates, a working family got almost $4,000 back, uh, but there's more to be done. We need permanent relief. Uh, so that's why I formed a task force on property taxes. Uh, the proposal I like the best is something called a homestead exemption. What this would do, and we plan on implementing this in the 2025 session, it would allow Montanans in their primary home to pay a lower rate. It would also benefit renters and it would benefit small businesses. And I think, but the, to pay for that, we're gonna charge out of state people with second homes here more. The Montana Taxpayers Association has something to say about this idea too. They say in part that the numbers used to model the outcomes are likely inaccurate, and things could pan out differently than predicted. Baked into Gianforte's messaging is also an allegation that property tax bills are going up because local spending is out of control. Now, local spending has gone up 6% every year for the last over 20 years, whereas inflation's been just over 2%. Uh, there's more spending than there is, uh, uh, than there is inflation and uh, the local municipalities have just continued to spend and spend and spend. That's a message county commissioners have been pushing back on. They say dealing in broad strokes ignores the details of what happens in each county. Perhaps new spending is paid for with a large energy project that grew the tax base, or from federal grants like those in the American Rescue Plan Act. Missoula County Commissioner Josh Slotnick put it like this. Missoula County, double digit increase in spending. Yeah, we got it. We also competed successfully for a massive federal infrastructure grant in the Swatupkin and Build area. We put in sewer, water, and road grid, enough infrastructure backbone to set the stage for development for 6,000 units of housing, the next 20,000 Missoulians. Should we not have done that because our spending went up? It wasn't taxes that went up. We got a massive federal grant. It's just the easiest thing to do to say your spending is out of control and really, really difficult to try and describe this crap. The reason homeowners got hit with such huge property tax bills requires a more nuanced view that can be found in the campaign rhetoric. The increase is mostly due to the fact that tax bills follow the tax base. And homes in Montana are growing in value faster than any other type of property. The assessed value on a West End home here in Billings might have gone up more than 30%. At the same time, the value of the bank building down the road went up 3% and the value of the communication infrastructure that serves them both actually fell in the eyes of state appraisers. 
Property tax policy is a bit like a thousand-piece puzzle with a missing box, and whoever ends up as governor for the next four years will be tasked with hashing out solutions with the legislature. Being Montana's 25th governor is truly the greatest honor of my life. I love serving this state, and uh, my message is simple. Uh, I want to bring the American dream closer to every Montanan. Uh, we're doing it with our pro-jobs, pro-business, pro-family agenda, and it's working. Our motto is get your Montana back, and we mean that. Um, we really do I mean it. This is a state that's made me a better person, and I feel like it's a state that changes people for the better. And I think the very basic fabrics of, of, the, of what makes this state so special is under attack, and I want people to know that Montanans care about it and we're going to fight for it. For Impact, I'm Stan Parker. The candidates agreed to one televised debate on the Montana Nonstop Local Network. We're going to rebroadcast that debate here on Montana PBS multiple times, beginning October 17th. 